I think that um, the opportunity to, to be able to showcase these heirloom rices um, really kind of widen our, my repertoire and also um, allow for a lot of new things that, that I can do um, with my work. My, my creativity is, is enhanced because the product is so beautiful no? and there's a lot of things that you can do with it. I mean, from a starter dish all the way to dessert. So I think that it's, um, it's uh, as a chef, I feel actually very blessed that I've been um, given the chance to add all these heirloom rices in, in the ingredient list that I work with. I think it also encouraged me to experiment with it, you know, to do, to do um, what I do in Italian, with Italian cuisine. And um, the, I find that it's, um, it's, a, it's a, nice, a nice rice that keeps its form. And um, because um, it also, I mean, absorbs um, liquid quite slowly. You no, know, it does it little by little. It takes a while to cook it. It also is a little bit reminiscent of Italian, of Arborio um, and uh, Carnaroli. Um, and it, it's great for precisely rice dishes that are cooked in broth. Um, and I, I, I like it because the, you know, the, the grains are short and um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's also kind of easy to cook with. It's good because it's flexible. You can cook with it or you can eat it plain, just the way we would eat normal white rice. Aside from that, I think the, the health and wellness value of it is, is really amazing. You know? Um, any, any time actually we go abroad, we notice that it's really the heirloom rices that um, kind of have a, um, a very passionate reaction from people. I, I think because they have never encountered rice of that quality and um, of that, uh, that, that flavor. And then of course they can see that the range is so wide because we bring, usually we bring maybe four or five varieties when we go and um, all the more when they taste it they they i think that it's 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 um their rices that they've never really encountered ever no because you know to be able to to get to know the farmers so closely and and to really kind of shake the hands of the people that you know that bring us our food no um, I, they, it, it was a, a real big learning um, to work with them and to also understand their, their struggles trying to be able to push the, the product abroad. Um, and even with the local market, I, you know, I had the opportunity to go with Undersecretary Berna Puyat up there and we did plant some heirloom rice. And it was my first chance you know, to put my, 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 my feet in the mud and, and, and to experience you know what our farmers do every day we only did it maybe for an hour and i think that it was a real life-changing experience because it makes you realize my gosh this is what they do every day talagang you know tama yung yung kanta na talagang magtanim ay dibiro you know because exposed to the heat and the elements and just to bring the rice to our tables so um it it really kind of makes you have um, a very, very different, renewed point of view about how important our farmers are in the scheme of things. Um, uh, promoting the use and, and using heirloom rice um, has brings so so much more um, sort of uh, benefits to not only our own community and, and, and the Philippines, but I think, you know, to the whole world to, to encourage um, people to be aware that if, if they, you know, if they um, support the Philippine heirloom rices, they're also supporting the preservation of a, of a culture that could otherwise have, be, have been lost a long time ago. of uh, people in the food industry who are now so interested in pushing the heirloom rices, the attention from, let's say, the culinary, uh, the chef's congress like Madrid Fusion, 
where you know the the best chefs in the world were able to have a chance to encounter our heirloom rices it's also put i think the heirloom rices i mean in the world stage no in 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 a bit of focus now so i think that we just need to continue to work at it and um continue to showcase it, share share the ingredients with other people who've never encountered them before. Well, I think judging from the way people have been reacting to it in the last two, three years, I think that um, we can only kind of look forward to a much, much brighter future for heirloom rices. I think that um, as far as I know, production has also increased now because there's been, I mean, a bit more of a demand. And um, I think what's great about it is the, the, the foreign market looks at it as fancy rices. They call, it, they call them fancy rices. And just imagine um, you know, what that would do for the farmers who are growing it. It's, um, it's, they're, they're go you know, eventually, I think people are going to start packing, packaging our heirloom rices in beautiful boxes and it's going to you know, end up in gourmet stores. And, and that's, that's, I think, where the future of our Philippine heirloom rices um, is going.